Dr. Laros scoffed at the report from the Orion sector, casually tossing it to his colleague. Says here an inconsequential human settlement of barely 10,000 on Kepler 452b just repelled a 100,000-strong Krogar invasion fleet. I'd say those Earthers earned the title of most dangerous species yet again, wouldn't you, Dr. Zaxa? Zaxor's eyes nearly popped from their stalks. He scanned the report in disbelief. The fearsome reptilian Krogar had ravaged countless worlds with their war fleets and infinite clone armies. Their technology eclipsed most spacefaring races. How could a handful of humans have withstood such an overwhelming force? This has to be an error, Zaxa muttered. Maybe some translation glitch. No primitives, earthers or otherwise, could accomplish such a feat against the Krogar hordes. No mistake, Laros said grimly. Kepler Colony broadcasted their victory on all frequencies, directly mocking the Krogar Emperor. They're led by an ex-Earth Defense Force captain named Jacob Perry, an unconventional military mind renowned for his brutal and brilliant tactics in the Centauri rebellions. When the Krogar arrived, demanding the humans' immediate surrender, Perry told them, and I quote, If you want our planet lizards, come and take it but I promise your scaly hides will fertilize our crops long before we kneel. He organized defenses around Kepler's merciless terrain and fauna, toxic gas pockets, acid lakes, vicious predators. Those he couldn't trap, he attacked with guerrilla strikes from underground tunnels. Zaxor pondered the situation, stroking his chin flaps. But the Krogar can replace their soldiers endlessly. Attrition alone should have crushed this Perry's resistance. You'd think so, said Laros, but that's where the Krogar made their fatal error. They invaded during Kepler 452b's solar flare season. When their reinforcement ships arrived in orbit, a solar storm erupted and... Hazaxa's eyes widened, his brain stalks twitching in amazement. By the stars, that's remarkable. The Zenthari are one of the most technologically advanced civilizations we've encountered. For a single human to outmaneuver them is unheard of. Laros nodded, a glint of admiration in his eyes. Indeed, the tale of the EDS Prometheus is a testament to human ingenuity. When the Zenthari attacked without provocation, they crippled the ship and slaughtered most of the crew. But against all odds, the vessel's chief engineer, a mere 28-year-old named Alexander Novak, kept the ship from falling apart. How did he manage that? Zaxor asked, leaning forward in his seat. Novak's a prodigy even by human standards, Laros explained. He single-handedly maintained the ship's critical systems and devised a brilliant escape plan. You see, the Prometheus was equipped with an experimental warp drive. Novak overloaded the engine core, creating a massive electromagnetic pulse that fried the Zenthari ship's systems, allowing the Prometheus to flee. Zaxor shook his head in disbelief. That's the kind of desperate gambit most pack-led engineers wouldn't dare attempt, let alone pull off successfully. And that's the thing about humans, Laros said. They seem to thrive when backed into a corner. The more dire the situation, the more creative and resourceful they become. It's as if adversity brings out the best in them. I you think that adaptability is what makes them so formidable? Zaxer asked. In part, yes. Their tumultuous history has shaped them, forced them to constantly innovate and overcome challenges. Conflict and competition seem to be woven into the very fabric of their society, Laros mused. But couldn't that also be their undoing? Zaxa countered. A species so prone to infighting might eventually tear itself apart. It's a valid concern, Laros admitted. But time and again we've seen them set aside their differences and unite against external threats. Just look at how they rallied against the Krogar invasion. Zaxor leaned back in his chair, his mind still reeling from the incredible tales of human ingenuity and resilience. You know, Laros, I recently heard about another remarkable human achievement that's been turning heads across the galaxy. Laros raised an eyebrow, his interest piqued. Oh, do tell. It's the story of Dr. Benjamin Samuels, a human xenobiologist who managed to do what no other species has ever done before, communicate with the Zorgons. Laros's eyes widened in surprise. The Zorgons, 
You mean those reclusive, pheromone-speaking aliens who've been giving the pack-led diplomatic corps headaches for centuries? Zaxor nodded, a hint of awe in his voice. The very same. Samuels, who's only forty-five years old, by the way, has been studying the Zorgons for over a decade. He finally cracked the code to their complex language and built a device that can replicate their chemical signals. Incredible, Laros muttered, shaking his head in disbelief. The Pakled have thrown their best minds at the Zorgon problem for generations, and this human solves it in a fraction of the time. That's not even the best part, Zaxor continued. Using his communication device, Samuels actually managed to negotiate a trade agreement between the Zorgons and the human colony on Arcturus Prime. Laros let out a low whistle. Impressive. The Zorgons are notoriously difficult to deal with even when you can understand their language. Samuels must have a real knack for diplomacy. It seems that way, Zaxor agreed. But I think it's more than just diplomacy. Humans have this unique combination of curiosity, perseverance, and adaptability that allows them to tackle challenges that would stump most other species. Laros nodded thoughtfully. You might be onto something there. It's like they're wired to keep pushing forward no matter how tough things get. And they're not afraid to think outside the box, either. Exactly. And when you combine that with their talent for communication and cooperation, it's no wonder they're making such a splash on the galactic stage. You know, I've been thinking, Laros said, leaning forward in his chair. As humans continue to explore and expand their influence, they might just end up playing a key role in shaping the future of the galaxy. Zaxor's expression turned pensive. It's a fascinating thought, but it also raises some concerns. How do you think other species will react to humanity's growing power and influence? Laros leaned back, his expression pensive. Speaking of human ingenuity, have you heard about the recent breakthrough in terraforming technology? Zaxor shook his head, his interest piqued. No, I haven't. What happened? A team of human scientists, led by a 55-year-old Swedish-born geoengineer named Dr. Liam Anderson, developed a revolutionary method for rapidly transforming hostile, barren planets into habitable worlds, Laros explained. How did they manage that? Zaxor asked, his eyes widening. Anderson and his team used a combination of genetically engineered microorganisms and advanced nanotechnology to create a self-sustaining ecosystem on the once lifeless planet of Kepler-186f, Laros said. And here's the kicker. They did it in just five years. Zaxor's jaw dropped. Five years. That's incredible. The Pakled have been working on a similar project for decades without much success. Laros nodded. It's a testament to human ingenuity and adaptability. They seem to have a knack for finding creative solutions to complex problems by combining different fields of knowledge and technology in unexpected ways. And it's not just their problem-solving skills, Zaxor added. Humans also seem to have a strong drive to explore and expand their horizons, both literally and figuratively. Exactly, Laros agreed. While many species are content to remain within the confines of their own star systems, humans have been actively seeking out new worlds and opportunities beyond their own galaxy. Zaxor frowned, a thought occurring to him. But couldn't that exploratory nature lead them into conflict with other species who are also vying for control of valuable resources and territories? Laros considered this for a moment. It's a valid concern, but I believe humans' ability to adapt and form alliances with other species may help them navigate these challenges. In fact, the success of Anderson's terraforming project has already attracted the interest of several other species who are eager to collaborate with humans on similar endeavors. Zaxor's expression turned thoughtful. It seems that wherever we look, humans are making waves and pushing the boundaries of what's possible. But I can't help but wonder... As Zaxor pondered the implications of Dr. Anderson's terraforming breakthrough, a shrill alarm pierced the air. The view screen flashed red with an urgent news bulletin. Laros' eyes widened as he read the scrolling text. By the stars, the Galactic Council headquarters on Telos has been attacked. Zaxor leaned forward, his brain stalks quivering, 
Attacked by whom? The report played, revealing shocking footage. A group of armed humans clad in sleek black armor stormed the council chambers. They moved with cold precision, gunning down security personnel. At their head strode a tall, imposing figure, a human male with a chiseled jaw and piercing blue eyes. Marcus Dante, Laris breathed, leader of the Terra Prime movement, human extremists bent on dominating the galaxy. Zaxor shook his head in disbelief. How did they breach Telos's defenses? That facility is impregnable. Details emerged as the report continued. The attackers had utilized advanced stealth tech to slip past security checkpoints undetected. More damningly, they'd had inside help. A council member had provided them with classified information. Ambassador Elena Nevsky, the human representative. The destruction was catastrophic. Vital infrastructure lay in ruins, fires raging unchecked. Worst of all, several key council members had been slain in the initial assault, including the Paklid ambassador Zolak. Laros and Zaxa sat in stunned silence as the report ended. The unthinkable had happened. Humanity, a species they'd just been praising, had dealt a crippling blow to the heart of galactic government. This is a declaration of war, Zaxa said grimly. The other races won't stand for such an attack. They'll seek to neutralize the human threat by any means necessary. Laros nodded, his expression pained. I fear you're right, my friend, but we must remember, not all humans support Terra Prime's actions. Many will surely stand against this aggression. Perhaps, Zaxor allowed, but the damage is done. Humanity's reputation is in tatters. Regaining the galaxy's trust will be no easy feat after today. An uneasy silence stretched between them as they contemplated the future. Humanity's rapid rise had brought both wondrous advancements and terrible destruction. The actions of a few extremists had altered the course of history, plunging the galaxy into uncertainty. As the pack-led scientists sat lost in thought, the smoldering ruins of the Galactic Council flickered across the viewscreen, a grim reminder of the new era dawning, an era in which humanity's ultimate role remained to be seen. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel, and for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.